Welcome to Arkansas Wildlife. We're in the thick of hunting season. Deer season's here, duck season just around the corner. This week, we're gonna take a look at a program offered by the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, the Junior Duck Stamp Program, which uses a little art and a little science to teach young Arkansans about waterfowl conservation. And a little later in the show, we're gonna do some outdoor cooking with Holly Sanders from the Witt Stevens Jr. Central Arkansas Nature Center. At deer camps all across the state, there's a lot of outdoor cooking going on this time of year, and one of the best ways to do that is with the tried and true Dutch oven. But first, more than 300,000 people have been in the woods for the opening weekend of Arkansas's modern gun deer season. If you've ever wondered why deer season is so deeply rooted in Arkansas culture, stick around. We've got an answer right after this break. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all, for less. Deer season in the natural state means different things to different people. For some, it's about the often elusive quest for a trophy buck. For others, it's about filling the freezer with free range protein. But no matter what the motivation, there's no doubt that deer season is woven deeply into Arkansas's cultural fabric. It means tradition to me. It's something I grew up doing. It's something that my dad would take me every year and it's, it's just gotten instilled into me, and so uh, it's, it's tradition, uh, uh, it's, it's Arkansas. Way to get out of the office. <laughs> That's where I take my vacation time. You know, I've been hunting for quite a few years of my life, and it's a way to relax. I try to spend at least a week for muzzleloading. I'm not a, a bow hunter, but muzzleloading and uh, modern gun, and I'll spend two weeks down here for mo modern gun. It's just more or less a getaway from everything, you know, we just get out there and enjoy ourselves, really. More than a quarter of a million deer hunters take to the woods on opening weekend of gun deer season. You'll see a lot of them along this highway that cuts through South Arkansas's deer-rich Gulf Coastal Plain. A steady parade of trucks towing campers and trailers filled with ATVs and sundry other hunting paraphernalia. And where else but rural Arkansas will you find a roadside stand selling used office furniture? Except these chairs aren't destined for a cubicle or conference room. They'll wind up in the middle of the woods, high atop a deer stand. stations along these highways also reveal the importance of deer season to rural commerce. Selling everything from sandwiches to ammunition, many small businesses count on deer season for a significant increase in sales each fall. At places like the A&P between Sheridan and Fordyce, the culture of whitetail hunting is celebrated in many forms, including decades worth of Polaroid snapshots. And when deer hunters stream through the doors, the sale of fuel, food, and other provisions greases the economic gears. Thank you, sir, and you have a good day. The weeks and months of preparation and anticipation all come together with the good times at deer camp. To have the fellowship, and uh, it, that's part of the fun. Hunting from the house is nowhere near as fun as hunting from deer camp, because that's it's, it's the atmosphere and the fellowship that you have with, with other hunters. We do spend a lot of time around the fire at night, because they're telling the same stories, but they're just as good this year as they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago. It's true. 
the stories seem a little better when they're told around the campfire. The food tastes a little better too. Old friends reunite while new bonds of friendship are formed. Deer season may mean different things to different people, but one thing remains the same. Its roots run deep in Arkansas culture. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by the Arkansas Game and Fish Foundation. Support wildlife and conservation education in the natural state. Become a member today. Every year, hunters by the thousands go afield in the natural state in hopes of bagging a limit of ducks. In Arkansas, duck hunting isn't just a hobby, it's a way of life. The federal duck stamp, more formally known as the Migratory Bird Hunting and Conservation Stamp, has been helping to preserve that way of life in the natural state and across the nation since 1934. There was a concern for the big decline of wetlands and what was happening to basically um, the environment due to the decline of those wetlands. And so they started the federal duck stamp as an art contest and the money and the proceeds for that went back into wetlands themselves. 98% of the money from federal duck stamps goes directly to the cause of purchasing land and easements and protecting wetland habitat on the National Wildlife Refuge System. Today, there's also a junior duck stamp art contest. You buy the federal duck stamp and it's a stamp you use to go hunting. The junior duck stamp is actually a collectible item. Earlier this year, the winners of both the federal and junior duck stamp contest were in Little Rock. James Hodman of Chaska, Minnesota and 12-year-old Isaac Schreiber of Duffield, Virginia showed off their winning designs during a ceremony at Bass Pro Shops. The first of this year's federal and junior duck stamps were sold during the June event. 100% of the money raised from the sale of the $5 junior duck stamp goes to support conservation education in the U.S. and its territories. Arkansas has participated in the junior duck stamp program since its inception in 1993, and the Natural States program continues to grow. We have currently, um, on average, about our last three years, we range from 2,500 to 3,000 students. Um, that changes our numbers of schools. Some schools send in a whole classroom and some just send in a couple. So we get a lot of kindergarten through third grade, which is our group one. And then we get a little bit less on our group four, which is our 10th to 12th grade. The students not only get to create unique duck stamp designs, they also learn about the science behind waterfowl and their habitats. Junior Duck Stamp Program is based off of the science through the arts motto. And although students draw these beautiful pieces of artwork, um, we really want you to get into the science of this education conservation that we focus on. It's not just classroom instruction. Students in the program take field trips to Game and Fish Wildlife Management Areas. I see ducks! Where they see ducks in their natural environment learn about the biology of waterfowl through hands-on experiences and instruction from game and fish biologists. <laughs> Learning that science kind of gets you that connection. And when you get that connection and then you draw it, you know, you, you do a little bit better. You get the colors better. You get um, their habitat down better. You kind of get the connection of that science through the art. Um, that's the exact thing that this program's looking for. But the education doesn't stop there. Back in the classroom, the students do more research to help them create lifelike works of art. Well, one, they have to study the species, so they have to know more about the species. When they start looking at habitat and backgrounds, they have to know where the animal lives, what type of foliage is around there, what type of places they will be, and so they learn more about it. 
The program is one of the most popular at Cabot Freshman Academy. I've been teaching for 20 years now and pretty much my entire teaching career students have been working with the program. They love it. They come in every year asking if they can be a part of this competition and so I just want to make it available to them. The student stamp designs are entered into the state contest with a chance to win scholarship money. Our overall winner gets a thousand dollar scholarship. The second place overall winner gets $500 scholarship and the third place overall winner is $250 scholarship. There's scholarships offered at the national competition also. Game and Fish staff with various backgrounds judge hundreds of entries. There are waterfowl biologists, artists, and even a TV producer with a duck hunting habit. The judges look for creativity, realism, and the appropriate use of waterfowl habitat. For the last couple years, my students have not only been able to highlight their talents, but they've been able to, to get scholarships that are going to go towards their college. And so they're very, very talented, and colleges are very expensive. And so I like them to have that, that aid, that benefit to help them in their college as well. While only one Arkansas student can take home the best of show prize and send his or her design to the national contest, Every participant leaves the program with a better understanding of waterfowl and conservation. It's something that grows every year, especially when they start off the seventh grade. And I tell them, don't expect you're going to win first place. You're not going to nationals the first, you know, the first year, but it's something they can build on. And so it helps their skill. It helps them continue to learn more about the waterfowl and the habitat and things like that. I think the motto for the, for the Federal Junior Duck Stamp Program the science through the arts motto kind of hits the nail on the head. It's teaching kids. They can draw these beautiful pieces of artwork and they do a fantastic job of it. But what's behind that artwork? The purpose of this program is the conservation part of it. And it makes a big difference in how you view things and what you become interested in throughout life. There's ducks way back there. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Arkansas's own PK Grills, maker of the new PK360, the best and last grill you'll ever buy. Hey, I'm here with Holly Sanders from the Witt Stevens Jr. Central Arkansas Nature Center, one of our Dutch oven cooking experts. Holly, what are we gonna whip up today? Well, the weather's getting cooler and the first thing I think about is chili. So, I have a recipe for wild Coney Island chili with cornbread deer dogs. So, we're gonna that sounds pretty cook interesting. up a mess of that today. All right, I'm gonna get out of the way and let Holly do her thing, but rest assured, I'll be back when it's time for some tasting. When the air starts get, to get a little crisp outside, folks want to spend more time in the outdoors, hunting and fishing, camping and hiking. And believe it or not, you can do a lot of cooking in the outdoors, especially if you have a Dutch oven. Uh, in a Dutch oven, you can cook any recipe that you can cook uh, in the house. And today, I'm gonna make a wild Coney Island chili with cornbread deer dogs. It's a savory and sweet uh, comfort dish, all in one Dutch oven that'll feed a crowd. I've got my charcoals uh, already uh, heated up. I'm gonna put kind of a medium-sized bed of coals here and a smaller bed here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my Dutch oven on the hot coals and get it to preheat. Just like that. If you turn your Dutch oven lid over, it can become a griddle. Now we're gonna start the chili first. I've got some ground venison. I love to use venison. Not only is it natural and organic, uh, but it doesn't cause a lot of grease to build up. You don't even have to drain it once you're done cooking it up. It's searing really nice. Got a good bed of coals under there. We're gonna let that brown. I also have some nice venison sausages. I really love these. Um, it's not a breakfast sausage, it's more like a brat. Um, if you don't have venison sausages, you can always substitute uh, brats in this recipe. And we're going to put that on our griddle and get that to kind of searing up a little bit. This recipe calls for three spices. We're going to use a little bit of chili powder, uh, some cumin, and some celery. Mix that up with your ground venison. It's 
gonna form kind of a little paste there. It's looking really good. Now we're gonna make the outdoor smell really good by adding a bunch of chopped garlic, about one medium onion, about two teaspoons of garlic. Mix that all up. It's already smelling really good. The onions are looking pretty translucent. Then after that, I'm gonna add uh, some little bit of brown sugar, uh, tomato paste, and some beef broth. And about a tablespoon of yellow mustard. Just give that a good mix. Let all those spices and onion and garlic kind of mix together, and that will form our chili. Now we'll let that bubble up and we'll make our cornbread batter. A lot of times when I'm outdoors, I try to do things uh, in an easier way, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use one box of cornbread mix and just make it to the package directions. I'm gonna add one egg and about two-thirds cup of milk. We'll give that a good stir here. And then to this batter, we're gonna add uh, one of those uh, small size uh, cream corn, kind of single serving, eight and a half ounce. We'll add that to the corn batter mix. And then we'll add a little bit of cheese because cheese makes everything better. Uh, about one fourth cup to one half cup cheese, shredded cheese, sharp. That's ready to go. I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna get our deer dogs and kind of slice those up into bite-sized pieces. Those have a nice good sear on them. We're just gonna kind of slice those up just like that. And I'm just gonna add these to the chili kind of randomly. That chili's really bubbling up now. I just kind of put it so uh, wherever somebody gets a big scoop of uh, this chili, they'll get one of these sausages. All right, our final touch is going to be to add our cornbread batter just right on top. And I'm not gonna mix it in, I'm just gonna kinda press it on top, just so it gives a little cover to it. And now in uh, true Dutch oven style, we're gonna take our lid and we're gonna put it on top. And it's important uh, that you have uh, uh, charcoal on top and on the bottom, that gives you the degrees for your oven. And there is a, a rule of thumb, per se, based on uh, the degrees that you want, how many charcoal you have on top and how many you have on the bottom. And uh, our nature centers do Dutch oven workshops uh, that you can attend, and we'll get in a little bit more detail on uh, how to, um, the tips for Dutch oven cooking. So we've got our charcoal in place. We're going to let this bake for about 30 minutes or until the cornbread is nice golden brown on top. As promised, I'm back because the food's ready. Holly, of course. We, is it time to eat? It is. Uh, right. The best part about Dutch oven cooking is lifting the lid. So well, we'll lift get started. that lid, lift that <laughs> lid. All right. Mm, smells Ooh. good. Come on over here. Get one of those sausages. And a little bit of chili and some of the cornbread. We get a little, get to taste everything there. It's pretty hot, but I'm gonna take one for the team and go ahead and try it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Mmm. Oh boy. Yeah. Good job, yeah. Holly. If you want to learn how to cook this and other Dutch oven dishes. Come see you at the Whit Stevens Jr. Central Arkansas Nature Center. Absolutely. Downtown, Always doing Dutch oven. Downtown Little Rock. Arkansas Wildlife presents the Watch and Win Giveaway. During each episode of Arkansas Wildlife, we'll give away an Arkansas resident hunting and fishing license, a $35.50 value provided by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Visit the Arkansas Wildlife webpage at ArkansasWildlife.com and click on the Watch and Win icon to enter. This week's winner is Michael Stewart from Little Rock. Congratulations and thanks for watching. Arkansas Wildlife TV isn't the only way to learn more about outdoor recreation and conservation in the natural state. The award-winning Arkansas Wildlife magazine can be delivered to your mailbox for just $12 a year. A subscription consists of six bi-monthly issues, including the popular Arkansas Wildlife Calendar. Get yours today.